Hey everybody, Johnny here. In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can use vertex painting to distribute objects on a mesh using geometry nodes. Let's get into it. Prior to getting started, I've created a couple of objects. The first one here is going to be our ground plane. It's really just a subdivided plane that I've given a little bit of shape using an applied displace modifier. The second thing I've added are these four separate blades of grass. They don't have to be very fancy, but these are what we're going to duplicate across our ground plane. We'll go ahead and add a geometry node tree to our ground plane. We'll add a point instance node and instance the collection that I've put the four blades of grass in. And we want to make sure to uncheck whole collection so that each point only one of the blades of grass is instanced. For more realism, we're going to want to add a point distribute node to more randomly distribute the blades of grass. We'll increase the density maximum to about 200. Later on, we can increase this if we need to. We do want to show our ground plane, so let's go ahead and join that back in. We'll use a geometry, join geometry node, plug in our original geometry to it. The next thing we want to be able to do is use vertex paint to decide where to put the grass. To start with, I'll go ahead and add a simple vertex paint. For our map, we want wherever it's green to have grass. So with this map painted, let's go ahead and bring it into our node tree. Under our object data properties tab, under vertex color, we can see that that color map is named COL. I could go ahead and change the density attribute of the point distribute node to be COL. But as you notice, this really didn't make any difference. That's because the density attribute wants to be a float and COL is a color. What we'd like to do is split out the three channels of our color and use just the green channel. To do that, I'm gonna use an attribute separate XYZ node. While this node was created to separate a vector into three components, X, Y, and Z, it will also work with a color input, separating it into R, G, and B. So here for my vector, I'm gonna choose the color. I'll put the X result in R, the Y result in G, and the Z result in B. Now for my density, instead of using COL, I'm going to use G. Now you'll still notice that this isn't having the effect we want, and there's a reason for that. If we go back into Vertex Paint, we see that the base color of this mesh is white, and the color white has R, G, and B all at maximum. So even though the G channel is at maximum on this one, the rest of the channels are also at maximum. So we're gonna recolor this real quick. To do that, we're gonna start with a completely black base. And then we'll paint on our green. Now we're getting the results we were looking for. Going back into the vertex paint, if we were to change to blue, we would see that that has no effect. However, if we were to choose halfway between green and blue, we would see an effect. Here I've added a rock object. Going back into my geometry node tree, I'm going to add another point instance and then choose my rock. I'm going to connect it to the output of this attribute separate node, then connect it to my join geometry. At this point, it's placed a rock at every point. That's not what we want. So we'll duplicate our point distribute and we'll turn the density way down. Now, if we only wanted to create rocks where it was blue, we could change the density here to blue. And now, wherever we paint blue on the object, we'll get rocks. Wherever we paint green, we'll get grass. And wherever we paint teal, we'll get both. A couple more little tweaks that we'll do before we finish. We'd like our grass to be different heights. So I'm going to add an attribute randomize node. The chain of my grass. The attribute to scale Set the minimum to 0.5 and the maximum to 4. Now, of course, this changes the scale of my grass 
in all three directions. Maybe that's not exactly what I want. So instead of a float here, I'm going to change it to a vector. The minimum on the x and y will be 1, minimum on the z will be 0.5, and the maximum on the z will be 5. There. Now the grass doesn't spread out as it gets taller. Additionally, I do want the grass to be more dense, so I'll change the maximum density of my grass to something like 500. And perhaps there's a few too many rocks, so I'll turn the maximum density down to 0.75. Now of course to keep my node tree a little nicer looking, I'm going to use the node relax add-on and click arrange nodes. And there we go, let's give this a render and see how it looks. For a quick render, that doesn't look too bad. Of course, we could continue tweaking the materials and the positions, add more different types of blades of grass with different materials, add additional rocks, or other types of set pieces. But this gives you the general idea of how you can use vertex colors in order to use the distribute methods more artistically. I hope this gives you some great ideas and inspires you to make something awesome. Thanks for taking some time out of your day to watch the video. If you're enjoying the channel, make sure to hit subscribe. So until next time, this is Johnny, and I'll catch you later.